Hello and welcome into SoRare Data Office Hours. I'm Andrew Laird. You can find me as Laird Union on SoRare, joined once again by SoRare Data founder, Podium CEO, Maxime Hagenbouger. Maxime, I was going to say it's been a while, but I saw you like two or three weeks ago, but everyone else has not. So welcome back. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> Glad to be here. I uh, wanted to start by saying that I'm the reason why we are late. So sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, and obviously... Um, uh, wishing everyone in the chat, everyone watching this, and you obviously uh, um, very happy 2024, and uh, lots of uh, good things for you guys. Yes, happy new year to everyone! Thanks everyone for joining us, um, Maxime. I had a lot of people asking me about you, and I didn't really know how to respond. So I didn't, <laughs> and you were like, hey, let's just do a stream. And I was like, if, okay, let's do it. And then I've had the same people are like, so when is the stream? And uh, so here it is. So what's going on? Yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> first I'm sick. So sorry for the voice. It might be a bit different from, from usually. <clears throat> and I'll try to not cough a lot during the stream, but um, yeah, so. Um, I think it's pretty clear to everyone watching and <laughs> what's going on with my gallery that um, I've been selling a, a lot of cards recently. Not limiteds. You can uh, see that my football limiteds are um, intact, untouched. Uh, but I'm selling most of my gallery. Um, yes. And I think it's it's a good time. We have a lot of time to discuss this. And I think it's a good time to actually discuss why I'm doing that. Um, and also like, uh, if you guys have any questions and stuff like that, we, we can, and I'm sure we'll, <laughs> we'll touch on many points during that conversation. Um, but so if you, if you let me some time to actually explain, uh, I would do so. So, um, I'm, I'm like, so user number 10 or something like that. Um, I invested a lot of ETH back in the days when, the only <clears throat> reasonable league of football was Jupiter Pro League. Uh, and it was a very dark time uh, in terms of like user experience and stuff like that. And so I took a shot with Sorer and obviously I took multiple shots with Sorer and I dedicated my net worth to about like well, maybe 99% of my net worth to Sorer uh, with Sorer data, obviously, um, and everything that followed. Um, and uh, back in the days, I, I invested more than like 30 ETH um, to buy some cards um, to get the gallery I wanted to have. Obviously, buy some PSG buy-on cards and stuff like that uh, when they were sold for the first time on the platform. Uh, but at that time, ETH was like, I don't know, 150 euros and stuff like that. So it was like very, well, let's say... Um, um, it was easy to buy, let's say. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say easy, but it, is, it was definitely easier, 10 times easier to buy ETH, to buy 30 ETH than it, was, um, than it is today. And at the time, you, you, don't, you didn't have the cash wallet, so you, you'd have to uh, buy ETH to actually enter the platform. Um, and the reason why I'm saying today is pretty simple. I, I, I think that we are going into an ETH bull market, and I think it's the, probably the last time for um a while if ever let's, let's be honest that i can actually get my initial eth back and enjoy them during the bull market um and it's just about like it's been four and a half years playing so uh, uh enjoying the games ups and downs <laughs> really um and i feel like if i don't do that today i'll probably never get my initial eth back and you could say, oh, that's still like um, um, in fiat and stuff like that. So it's it's like um, you're you're gaining, you're winning a lot of money out of this. That's that's for sure. But um, <laughs> I have way more belief in um, ETH than fiat. So I'm I'm sticking to my initial ETH and to my initial um, payment. And so that's why I'm trying to get my initial uh, investment back. Yeah. You know? I'm, I'm close to getting that, uh, getting to that point. 
Uh, but that <clears throat> that doesn't mean I'm leaving the game. Uh, obviously, I will still be playing. Um, I will stop playing. <clears throat> so NBA, I, I, I already stopped playing. So NBA for quite some time now, uh, from the beginning of the season. I probably um, still play some MLB because I like the sports. I like the sport. And I will still be playing so our football, but from, from a new gallery. Maybe I'll, I'll I'll keep some some cars. I want to play. Th- I want to keep three cars out of my initial gallery and start over from then. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, basically, um, time to move on for me in terms of like trying to get my initial investment back. And um, <laughs> it's not financial advice, obviously, but I'm I'm feeling like the bull market is closer than ever, and so. I prefer to hold ETH than uh, solar cards. <clears throat> Does some of that come from the thought that solar cards are now much more closely tied to fiat value than ETH and that the value of that ETH will be worth more than the cards that the ETH theoretically <laughs> represents? Yes, I, I don't buy the narrative that would um, make solar cards way uh, more expensive through uh, with the bull market in ETH, probably in fiat, but I think ETH is going to overperform solar cards. Um, I think historically, it, it, it like also like in 2020, 2021, like the, the price of cards like kind of followed ETH in terms of like um, uh, fiat price, but we were in a bull market where like NFTs were the stars of the bull market and people were trying like to um, uh, get Mbappes for like 10 ETH, 15 ETH, 50 ETH. So we were in kind of like a, a very different market. I don't think NFTs are going to be the star, the stars of the next bull market. And I don't think Sora is going to be the star of the next bull market. Uh, I think um, Sora is now like... We, we won't see like some, uh, or I might be wrong, but I don't think we will see some kind of dramatic rise in prices uh, overnight. And that's exactly what happened in 2021 or 2020. I don't remember. Oh, 2021. Yeah. I sold an Mbappe for 90th. The same card was sold for 50th, like five days after that. And I don't, I don't think we will see that again. Um, and yeah, anyway, I feel like playing a game daily for four years and a half. Um, it's, it's quite tiring, especially with the size of the of, of my gallery. And I think it's time also for me to try to enjoy the game again and by um, starting small and why not uh, guiding and uh, starting from limited. I, I, I probably won't start with limited because it's it's going to be too frustrating for me. But like starting with the, like a smaller gallery and trying to build a strong team on a limited budget. The... 2021 kind of boom for so rare i think if if you were a user before that and you saw prices just explode and then subsequently have declined since then i think you kind of forget that during that time a lot of people a lot of so rare managers were complaining almost that that they weren't <clears throat> rising as much as eth or as much as other nfts it was kind of this weird dual feeling of wow my cards are worth so much more but like wow why is that picture of a rock worth so much more than my cards and we kind of forget that we we've argued that we want our cards to be kind of representative of eth people are like oh it's a, it's either a hedge against eth or it's buy, you know you're you're taking advantage of eth movements and i don't want to I don't want to like compare it to even other cryptocurrencies. Like it's really just ETH. And we have seen over the last couple of years, so rare purposely trying to separate it. And I think there was always this underlying thought that whatever the card prices were, they were really closer aligned to the fiat underlying fiat value of the ETH that we were using. But obviously the introduction of the cash wallet makes it so that they are trying to separate it. And there are lots of users who were very into (laughs) crypto and very into NFTs that don't like the move to fiat. But it also feels like they needed to do it in order for the platform to grow. So 
it doesn't seem like you you're selling because you're like, oh, so rare is going to zero. It's more that you have found something else that you think will appreciate more and that you joined so rare at a time and experienced a time where you where it was an investment. And now you're looking at it like if you're still looking at it as an investment vehicle and you see a different <clears throat> opportunity that could be worth more in the short term, you take that opportunity. I, I'd say long term, but yeah, yeah. Uh, no, so Sorry, yes, but like, I mean, well, really both. No, but, but, but I, I'll be, I'll be honest. I think I'm selling at a, a pretty much the worst time in the history of my gallery. I think like maybe in the first 10 months, um, that would probably have been like a bad move to sell at that point. But I'm probably selling at like a very low point in terms of uh, gallery valuation, in terms of market sentiment. Um, uh, and in terms of period, I think like, um, I think like selling during the, the Christmas break is like absolutely like um, dumb. Uh, but but I do that because I feel like oh, I, it's basically FOMO from like, I don't want to miss ETH like making a, a, a 400 year dollars a jump uh, overnight. Uh, we've seen uh, Bitcoin rising like a, uh, <clears throat> quite significantly over the past few months. And I don't want to feel like um, I'm not doing that. Like it, it, you have to do it at some point. So let's mm -hmm. just like get, get, uh, uh, let's, let's just do it like as soon as possible. I've been trying to sell cards since September to be, uh, well, you can see that in my uh, transactions history. Um, but really, December was like the point uh, where well, I felt like uh, I have to do this now because um, if I don't do it, I'll probably regret it. And uh, and yeah, I feel like it's absolutely the worst time to sell um, because I think we reached a low, a low point in terms of market sentiment. Um, I don't think we're going to go much... Uh, uh, um, much further, like um, I think, um, I, I've I've watched yesterday. I I've, I want to give a little bit more context um, to people also. So why I've been away from a podcast and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> the the end of twenty twenty three was kind of special and complicated to me because um, I had to um, kind of like uh, stop working uh, to focus on my. Uh, on myself and on my uh, mental health. It's been like quite a significant ride <clears throat> during the past four years um, with Sora and Sora Data and I just had to stop working. It's it's You just wake up one day, you feel like you can't do this anymore and, and that's exactly what happened to me. And I feel like it also explains my decision, like um, kind of like wanting to like, take a step back, like feel like I'm not, if Sora goes down tomorrow, for example, um, at least I, I will have my gallery back and my investment back. I feel like I needed also to take a step back to to feel like um, I'm not 100% like my net worth or my um, financial stability is not 100% linked to Sora. Um, and so, yeah, I had to work on myself and I'm still like a work in progress, obviously. Um, but yeah, it definitely like, um, had a, a significant impact in my decision. I felt like it was also kind of the right move for me to, uh, yeah, as I said, take a step back. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, um, I, I don't remember what's the, what, what was the question first, but yeah, I just wanted to give that context also because, uh, I feel like also it's important for people like to hear this kind of story. I feel like I've been heads down for the past four years and I've been hearing so many stories of people saying you should take a step back, you should try and like slow down. And I definitely didn't like listen to those comments and I didn't, um, I was like um, convinced that my only priority was work and uh, doing what I could do for Sora and Sora Data. Um, and in retrospect, it was like kind of, a very big mistake and now i'm paying the price also and i feel like um it's when you hear the, this kind of story you're like oh no but it's it's just other people living through this kind of stuff but uh, actually it can happen to anyone 
And so, yeah, if I can help someone that feels like they don't like, they are not necessarily in the right place mentally, um, or they feel like, uh, yeah, uh, they need changes in their lives. Um, I feel like it's also the right uh, time to, to, to tell you get that. So, yeah, I mean, um, FOMO, definitely FOMO, uh, definitely mental health issues you know, on my side, like um, financial insecurity and stuff like that. And, um, uh, and I, I've not uh, paid myself a salary yet. Uh, 2024 is a year where I get a salary. So you, if you get that also in uh, into a context, it's also um, why I felt kind of like insecure uh, financially and, and selling the gallery was also the, the right uh, move for me to feel a little a little bit better about my situation. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> I get think the whole picture now. I think the it probably just go, has gone unnoticed or just unappreciated. But you, like you said, you were sore user ten or so, whatever it was. You you've been involved in this game basically the entire time. And it went from being you playing a game to you running a site that was just your side project as you still had full-time work and then decided to create a new company with employees. And it's, it's, it was all encompassing. I mean, it was your hobby <clears throat> to then your, your profession. And I don't think there are many people on the planet who have dedicated more time to so rare than you. And I think there are a lot of people who watch this content or, or play so rare and they talk about how much time they spend on it. And it's really not remotely close to how much time you have spent on this. And, well, and it, it can get just like you said, like it can get to a point where it, it's just too much. And I think we're all quite, happy that you were able to to realize it and take a step back because it there are plenty of people in situations like that that don't and then it you know just turns into something yeah. worse and so um <coughs> it's at least <clears throat> i think understandable that that's the case and more that more of that you've kind of described that if your entire net worth is tied to some, something else that you really don't have total control over, that can be a little scary too. And so it's all understandable. And I think we're also kind of pleased to hear as people who continue to play the game that you're going to at least try to continue to play also. Like it, the game is still at a point where you want to participate. It's not that you are saying, this is awful, I'm <clears> out of here. Yeah, I, I, and again, I feel like it's, it's kind of like meeting the point where I was saying, I think we are in a all time low in terms of market sentiment and and like um <laughs> community mood let's say i think i think everyone now has noticed like i i remember andrew really like the the episode we did on on sustainability and I, I feel like we did like i don't know three months or four months ago i don't remember exactly probably september uh or august i don't remember but we were kind of told at that time that we were saying kind of crazy stuff and that um, uh, our ideas were kind of like lame or stuff like that. So um, obviously everyone would want like, um, like every software user would want like to have um, all their friends join the platform and everyone in the, in, in, on the planet join the platform and stuff like that. And everyone was so focused on getting new users and stuff like that. But I think that we have to understand that like um, magic growth that we seen um, in the past years will not happen again unless like something very dramatic happens. Um, and it might, but uh, it's definitely uh, unlikely, let's say, at least to me. And so I think we have, as a community, we have to understand that we have like structural problems in the game and that they need to be solved and it's not going to be easy to solve them and it's not going to be optimal for many players. Um, but I think if you see over the long term, I think that if you have a sustainable platform, if you have like good foundations and that everyone like accept them, it's only going to be beneficial for the platform. Um, 
and I think that they understand what changes they, what changes they have to make, and I think they will take action. I guess like in the coming month to actually solve those problems. Um, so I, I watched the Nicola interview on the French podcast, uh, or like of like um, three weeks ago, I think. And I think he 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 makes a good like he does not avoid problems, and I think he has like a good understanding of what the problems are. And I think that um, as a community, again, I, I've watched a Chinese video on on his stance on the community and why he thinks that community should be a bit like or less negative, let's say. And I, I somewhat agree with him because I think that um, one of the big problems that Soraya suffers today is a problem of reputation. And I I understand why, because I think uh, so, so many people are frustrated like at the recent price drops and the price drops since like 2022, basically, because we are basically at a time where <laughs> we are at prices that were seen last time in 2021 or 2020. And um, and I think that is frustrating for everyone, and I understand that. But I think that, um, like, um, uh, criticisms is going to help. Uh, constructive uh, criticism is going to help, but like, oh, <laughs> um, negativity isn't. And I think that uh, when I, I had multiple examples of people trying to join the platform and just that uh, checking social network, uh, social media. And just saying, uh, I'm not going to do that. It feels like uh, I'm just going to lose money or like people are mad at the company and stuff like that. And I feel it has um, uh, um, an impact. And so I think the community has to get together too. Um, and, and it has to come from Sora to actually make sure the community is involved in taking decisions and um, making sure that they um, uh, maintain uh, the philosophy that we all love, but also ensure that... Um, um, the company at least doesn't lose money over a long period of time and that players get to live experiences that they want to live and that they enjoy living um, while trying to make sure that uh, they are not like um, burning cash um, day one of their um, uh, day one trying to build a gallery. <clears throat> and I think like so many people are frustrated and I think like we have reach the point where like it's not really easy to conduct like con con like let's say um um constructive uh, criticism and um and i think that's 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 too bad and i think um i, ha I hope 2024 will uh, enable us to um try to be a bit more positive or a, a bit more constructive on on um what i should do um, and I think we should get behind them and show them some kind of support, um, um, thinking that they uh, will find the right solutions to 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 counter what's going on right now. And I think they have, they are, I, I, I trust they have um, the right context, the right, um, they know there's a problem and I think they are going to solve it. But it's not going to take like a month. It's not going to take like... Um, six months is probably going to take way more than that. And and it's just because they have made decisions that have had an impact over the long term and they probably didn't see the impact that those decisions uh, were going to, um, uh, the impact those decisions were going to have. Um, like, for example, I, I think about like the 60-40 uh, ratio, like for example, like saying we're going to sell 60% of the supply and 40% are going to be rewards. I don't think that like that was like maybe the the brightest uh, decision at that time. But oh, oh, like for example, also like um, the cap two forty divisions replacing the uh, all star rare threshold. Like, in retrospect, it's probably also not the brightest decision at that point. And so all these decisions like accumulate, and you have to actually uh, now. <laughs> Um, try to counter those and try to to um, uh, um, find mechanisms or change your gameplay in order to have like some kind of sustainable economy. Uh, so yeah, lots of things to actually do, but I think they have like the right um, context. I think they have the right like they know what's wrong. But yeah, 
it's going to take some quite some work to actually get out of that situation. I think they're <clears throat> to go back to the negative negativity <laughs> thing because I feel like some of it just spawns more of it. But <clears throat> I think we can all agree that constructive criticism is helpful. The problem is, is that it tends to just be complaints and negativity and it's not actually constructive criticism. And yeah, if we can, if we can move from the, from being negative to being constructively critical as a community, I think that that helps everyone. But Sora do have a, a, a very difficult task of essentially trying to fix what they've created and it, it, they didn't create the situation in a in a way that they knew they would have to do this later like that i think it's very difficult to project what your platform will look like in five years when it's a platform that has never really existed before and i think we kind of under appreciate that as well that there's no just do it like that guy or they, they've figured it like nobody has figured this mm -hmm. out but there are fundamental issues that they that need to be addressed and they know that and i think that even that is something that i think a lot of users ignore uh, i guess it's ignore like they know that there are problems they have to fix and they know that solutions that screw all of your users are not solutions. And so they're, they have this very difficult balance that they need to figure out of how do we not anger our existing user base, but also fix the game so that it's a sustainable model and that we can continue to have good users. Do you think that gets solved in 2024? Yeah. Uh before answering your question and you have to do this fast because the games the game keeps being played the rewards gets uh, issued every tuesday and every friday and so it's a problem that doesn't stop so i feel like yeah um <clears throat> I, I i don't think it's going to be completely solved in 2024 i would be surprised but i think it's it's difficult to go <laughs> lower than we are uh, than the point that we are at today and so um, yeah i think that um now that they have a, also some kind of experience of what's uh of the ecosystem or um what kind of decisions they uh, they can make and what are the effects of those decisions um i think I think they will solve most of it in 2024. At least they will try to solve most of it in 2024. I have no doubts about that. But I'm not sure the problem will be handled in 2024. And I'm pretty sure we will have new issues um, rising from that. But I mean, at the end of the day, to me, the, the first priority that should be is making sure that people are ready to play a game and 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 spend money on a game that they enjoy playing and um and and i think that's one of the things that wasn't really w w done well over the past years because as you said at the beginning so it was seen as an investment and not really as like <laughs> a, a fantasy game and i think this transition is very difficult because you have a lot of people are waiting, like exactly what I've did, uh, what I did with like selling the, my gallery is like you had a lot, of, you have a lot of people like waiting to sell their gallery, having some kind of like unrealized profit and loss, and so you can't say to those people, well, <laughs> you're going to lose everything, or the changes we are going to introduce are going to have like such an effect that is going to affect the, the gallery value of a, lot, of a lot of people. And so that's, that's the main problem, right? And, and so what can you do to actually like improve your gameplay, make sure that people are playing the game um, and love the game they're, play, they're playing that they can spend money on. And that's why, that's why they talked about fitness, right? Fitness was kind of like, a good balance between not hurting card valuations, but making sure people were spending more money uh, on the platform and making sure that you could 
have like um um some kind of sustainable revenue out of like your cards or the, or the cards that you sell and that's why they said that they were exploring the idea um and i think the problem with fitness was it was kind of like against the whole philosophy of like on your game and infinite utility of your cards like if your player lives and if your player plays then you're going to be able to play with him and and so you're you're kind of like at the crossroad where you have like probably to change a bit the narrative behind on your game if you want to have a six um, um a sustainable uh, game economy or at least find other ways to make well if you don't want to touch that on your game philosophy you have to find ways to like um <laughs> make more money that is not uh, affecting card utility that's and 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 i think i <laughs> what i said when i wanted to do this episode i think i, I said i wanted to give like positive outlook and and I think like to me, the positive outlook is all about regulation. And I think that um, they did such a good job at, fi- at <laughs> convincing lawmakers in France um, to not hurt their um, uh, business model too much uh, with regulation. And what they did is that they are probably, they, they are one step away from being able to um, have a paid entry tournaments and which is to me like such a good way to actually make more money out of your game so I, I know a lot of people are going to say well I don't want to pay entry I'm already have my cards they should be enough sure uh, play or other tournaments but if you want to like reinvest the money that uh, people are spending on tournaments so that you can have like a, a large pot of money to be won um, and make sure like you can also like um, get money from people that have invested in the past but are only yielding money from you now. Uh, I think that's a good way to like introduce that. And so regulation in 2024 is going to be a done deal probably and it's going to enable so many things. And so I'm, I'm really curious of what they're going to do with that and the same thing with rivals i think rivals is very very good to educate people on the game i think it's a fun way to uh, watch a football game with friends but if you can add some kind of money to that money aspect to that also could be very interesting and so that's and that's why I, I think Sorer grew too fast and I think Sorer kind of like had like a, a poison gift when they raised so many money, so much money, sorry, <clears throat> back in 2021 because everyone expected them to be like the entertainment giant that they, they say they are going to be. But it takes so many years to actually like have a good regulatory framework to have... Um, um, the right people at the right place, the right organization moving from like uh, 20 people to like 150 people in two different countries. And boy, those two countries are very different in so many aspects. Um, so yeah, I think that um, it's, it's, it's normal that it takes so, uh, a long time to actually get to that vision. And, and it's normal that we have to face different market cycle. Uh, but I'm, I'm such a strong believer in the fact that um, NFT-based fantasy games are so much better than, than traditional gambling. And, and this is not something that is going to change, I think, until I die. Even if I'm proven wrong, I'll be like, you guys are wrong. <laughs> you, you don't know what you're missing right now. Um, but you have to find the right, um, the right model for that to be actually true. Is the, is the, I'm trying to think of like how much of how difficult it is to create or try to work on a game where you don't know what the regulatory framework is. Like, you know, with that, with sports betting, there are like, there are very specific laws about sports gambling and they're different in lots of places, but there, there's a framework in each place. And so we're kind of operated in this. I mean, it was effectively un, an unregulated area, not because they were 
trying to avoid things. It's just the NFT based fantasy sports games were just not part of any sort of government thought five years ago. And so there yeah. is a difficulty in, in even just they, even if they have the, the perfect idea of how to make everything get better, they don't know if in three months regulators will come down and say, Nope, you can't do that. And you just have to shut the whole thing down. So there is like the, the time it takes for so rare to do things is extended by whatever amount of time, simply because we don't have a regulatory framework. And I think most people don't know that, or they just don't even think about it because we just don't think about it. Or they just consider it as not applicable to their situation. And I think that it's also a way to look at it. And I think that's, that's a, that's a valid um, stance um, because when you are someone that bought their gallery in 2022, you say, I don't give a damn about the regulatory framework. I don't give a damn about um, <laughs> uh, you guys, uh, what you're going through. I, I don't give a damn. It's just like, I feel like I've been cheated on. Mm-hmm. Or I feel like you guys didn't do the right things to actually ensure that I didn't lose much money out of this. Uh, and I think that's the, the, the whole point is, and, and we had such endless debates about that um, and, and so many years ago um, to, to make sure that people don't see that at an investment, what, what, what are the things that I should do? It's like, and, and is, or should they embrace the fact that they are um, a gambling platform and some kind of investment? But um, I think that the, the problem is people, most most users see it as an investment and do not see it as a gaming platform. Um, and if it's the player sentiment, you have to adapt to that. And for example, they can they can argue that Sora printed too many cards, for example, um, because and they didn't, protect the value of existing cards. I'm a strong believer that most licensed leagues are a mistake. Um, Like, I don't think Second Division Europe was a good thing. I don't think, like, Croatian League, Danish Leagues uh, were a good thing. And, and yeah, I know, I know. And Peruvian... uh, Maybe Argentina was fine, but I don't like Argentina for obvious reasons because I'm French. But uh, um, no, but you see what I mean? You see my point? I think that when you issue and when you print so many cards, you're affecting the overall value of your game, of your cards, and it hurts everyone. And so um, I'm not sure like wanting to sign the top 20 leagues um, on the planet is such a good objective to have. Um, and I think like uh, people that have lost so, so much value on cards they bought um, in uh, back in the days are, uh, I, I, I completely agree with um, them saying that, um, so I didn't do a good job at like protecting the value of their cards. <clears throat> and, and 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 something I want to add to that is that so Nicola said in the interview they are not like actively trying to affect the market and stuff like that. And I I I disagree with that. And I think that it's not something that is correct. And the counterpoint to that is that list or, list or play is definitely something that is trying to actively change the market. And so I think that I, I don't care about uh, I don't care about like Sora trying to affect the market if it's positive for the player if it's like um, because like by selling more cards they are affecting the market like because yeah they are adding more value to the to, to the uh, well and and they are adding more value to, on the market and so probably they are affecting the value of other cards on the platform so I think Sora should embrace the fact that they are. The market regulator and they have they need to have some rules and they need to have like some objectives some transparency on that and thinking like saying like here's our plan uh here's what we think we want to do because nicola said like 
I don't know, in 2023, I don't know when, but they, they said they wanted to have a stable market and they didn't do a good job at that. It's like, it's like, it's pretty obvious. And so you cannot say we're not trying to affect the market, but we're trying to have a stable market at the same time. It doesn't make sense. Um, and so I, I think like people wanting accountability on those issues are right to asking to ask for accountability because um, <laughs> you're the primary seller of those cards. I don't remember if it was list or play. It feels like it, it fits in that situation. But there was some sort of market rule that went in. Let's say it was more list or play. And your, I remember your response at the time was if it, it felt like they were doing it to slow prices from going down. And you said if you you can't have a new rule that only applies in a bear market. That if yes. you have a, a new rule, it should apply to both. And I can't imagine they would have ever considered list or play in a bull market. Like you want people to just buy your, they're going up, just keep buying them. And so that, that is an interesting and, kind of, and, yeah. And that's why I'm saying Christmas break is the worst period to actually sell because you don't have that restriction because yeah. most cards aren't paying. And so you're like, oh, if I want to sell the, that Kimish guy or he's not paying during the Christmas break, it's, it's the easiest time to list it so it's the worst time to actually sell it um and 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 i hate it i i mean i hate it because it's like to me it doesn't make sense and like they have if if we face a bull market again they have to disable that feature and 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 i i i wasn't against like something like in 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 certain uh, market conditions uh, so we are going to do this, 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 and list our play. And in the opposite market conditions, we're going to do this, 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 and remove list our play. I'm fine with that. But the problem is it's too easy to change the rules when something is not going the way it should go. But it's very difficult to um, undo the rule when you're finally in the right position and you're like, ah, when you do that, you kind of lose credibility and you kind of lose like, well, yeah, trust of, of people. Mm -hmm. Why are you going to keep playing with limiteds? No, no, no. I, 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 no, sir. <clears throat> My plan is to, um, I don't want to sell them. So I had like 800 cards. It was like such a mess to actually sell my gallery card by card. So if you, I can explain to you what was my reasoning and, and my experience. It was an awful experience, obviously. But um, um, so I'm not willing to sell limiteds one by one. And I have a awful gallery of limited, So it shouldn't be like a good foundation for my, for my new gallery. So I will have three cards that are going to be my, my foundations, which are uh, Thiago Almada, Thiago Almada, and Alexander Vukotic. And... And and don't ask me why they are going to be the pillars of my next gallery. That's that's like that's certain. Alexander Woodcott is just like I have like such a like I tried to sell it and I was like no I I just don't want to sell this card this card I'm not going to sell. And and I have too much fun watching Thiago Almada play so it's like not selling those. Uh, but then I, I'm probably going to take an ETH or something like that out of what I'm going to um, get from uh, from the gallery uh, I'm going to sell. Well, I'm selling. Uh, <laughs> sorry. And uh, just trying to grind back. So you and, like the game think... enough to keep doing that? Sorry? You like the game enough to keep doing that, to, to uh, grind I think out? It's, I think it's, to me, it's so interesting it has like um just like as so <laughs> that i found there because i'm going to use our data and i'm going to see what's wrong and what's going to what what's needed <laughs> obviously we know what's needed already but it's like you have to still use your product to actually make sure that uh, what you do is is correct and so first it's i have to do that for my company but also i think again it's a it's saying um I just feel like 
this is so much better than anything that has been done in terms of like fantasy sports and I don't know gambling and and I feel like I could spend hours trying to build a gallery on a limited budget. I kind of like brute force my way um, uh, <laughs> um, first because like I had a uh, large initial investment. I was like, okay, uh, PSG cards are out. I'm going to buy every single PSG player I want. And this time it's not going to be that way. Well, uh, I think because if a PSG player, well, you don't have any play PSG players being sold on auction right now, but um, I think it's going to be um, very interesting to me um, and very fun to actually try to kind back. Do, um, how do I want to word this? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to have to think about that more. Hold on. Uh, Alex said, if you're expecting an ETH boom, when can we play pay for SOAR data in ETH? Uh, when Stripe, our payment processor, actually enables us to do that. That'll be fun. We should do that. Um, so the, I will, did the game, because of your gallery, and like you said, you just brute forced your way to the PSG and Byron cards. Did the game itself get boring to you because you had the best cards? <clears throat> no, I feel like I think I, I, I feel like I and I think it's true. I well, I I'm selling my gallery at the worst time possible. So thank God I had some yield uh, through mm -hmm. my gaming also through tournaments and stuff like that to ensure that I would um, at least get a break even uh, in ETH. I'm not talking about fiat, obviously, but in ETH. Um, but I feel like I had the early user privilege. And so I basically, you could basically buy any card at one point and make a profit just because you were like early. Yeah. But let's also remember that at the time, we were not a lot of users uh, on the platform, and there was absolutely no guarantee that so I was going to be become what they actually became. So you were taking such a risk. Like I'm, I'm always referring to Zero when I'm talking about that. It's like Zero went on every good Unix on the platform, and the, this guy won the game because he took so many risks and actually sold <laughs> at the right time and. And he was like, you should have sold at the, at the same time as you. And I'm like, well, hey, hey, obviously. But now, um, at, at that time, it was like, oh, <laughs> he's selling such a bad move. Yeah. And, and <laughs> no, and, and really, he won the game. To me, he won the game. Uh, so, no, I had the, the early user privilege of like uh, making money not because I made good decisions, but making money because I was early. And I want to prove myself. And I think that's the only way to prove yourself you're a good man sorry, a manager. It's like having a limited budget and not uh, overspending and and making sure that uh, through the game, um, you're actually progressing and you're actually making sure that in like, let's do another episode in a year, for example, um, at least protect your gallery value and somewhat win uh competitions or at least like getting like very high uh ranks sometimes so i i think you're ignoring that like because it worked out the whole i was early so i bought cards and then they became worth a lot ignores that they easily could have been worth zero yes so no, like, it's not like it was risk-free no, no, here. No, no, I, I, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, yeah, uh, that's what I meant by saying, like, there was no guarantee that I was going to become what, what it became. But um, I feel like it's not, it wasn't about my um, uh, football knowledge or my decisions that, like, let's say my football decisions that I've made money out. Uh, of so okay, yeah I, that's fair the reason why i made up my money is i took a risk and it paid up um and so i want to do it like the with my scout hat on and just say i have a limited budget um uh, let's see what i can do with it okay that's fair that's fair i just didn't want it to 
like it felt like it was pure hindsight that it was like, yeah, it was early. So now I'm rich. And it's like, it doesn't, it's not that easy. I'm not that. And also I'm not that rich. So. <laughs> uh, now you're back on the payroll too. Um, yeah. But the, yeah, I just, I, I do feel like the negative responses to those who are early kind of ignore that it could have gone to zero. That and they, so, I, I wish they could, they could like visit the original so our website and 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 tell people oh, I would have done it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've said it before myself that when I joined and I joined before like the huge boom, but just where I was in my understanding of crypto and NFTs and fantasy sports, I thought this was the worst idea I'd ever heard. I couldn't believe anybody would ever play. And here I am anyway. Um, what do you think, what do you think the game looks like soon? Like we, Nicola said that some changes are coming. Do you have any idea of what, or any thoughts? Uh, of what? Yeah, I think you rewatch our sustainability episode and you still, um, laugh at us, but, uh, you will see some of the things that we actually talked, uh, talked about being implemented somehow. I think that's. Like, let's do it over again. I think that the problem they have is that they don't make enough money. They're spending so much money on thresholds. Uh, they're spending like 50% of their revenue, like their weekly revenue on thresholds. It's not sustainable. It, it would be sustainable in like a gambling, for a gambling platform because gambling platforms don't have to pay licensing fees, right? So gambling platforms, you develop a product where you can Oh, well, software where you can like a website where people can bet on anything, basically. Mm -hmm. And so what you have to do is making sure that your odds are um, as favorable as they can to you. Right. So you can get you can uh, make money out of it. But uh, apart from infrastructure costs and um uh, manpower you don't have like a lot of costs like uh, also uh, marketing costs stuff like that obviously but that's it um Sora has to pay players so that they have something to win and that's something that is attractive i'm not saying that um Sora shouldn't have like <laughs> prizes and stuff like that obviously um they have to do marketing obviously to attract new players they have to um uh did i say licensing already well let's say licensing and they have to pay offices etc and manpower um over two continents and so you cannot spend 50 percent of your revenue on gambling on gambling like uh, winnings let's say mm -hmm. uh, so they have to find a way to actually make sure that they spend like a uh the same percentage every week somehow um or maybe not the same, but like some kind of balance on like, I don't know, 30, 25%. I think that's fine. Uh, but they also have to increase the volume and the revenue they make out of the cars they sell. So, so they sell. So how do you make sure that uh, you sell more cards? I don't think that's a reasonable idea right now. Or, or do you make sure that the cards that you're selling uh, are paid? Uh, well, you to make sure that people pay more for the cars you're selling. And so instant buy is a really fun idea in that sense because they're basically saying, you want that car now? Uh, well, pay for it now. You pay a premium. You could get it on the, on the secondary market, but just, just give the money to us and, and we'll be fine. And that's a fun idea. And I think that that's something that was very frustrating in the early days of Soran and, and, when I tried to do the Premier League event, like the stuff, I didn't have like um, enough uh, new season cards to actually participate in the rare event. And so I went on the market like, I don't know, an hour and a half before the game, before the event started. And there was no action on. And I was like, what should I do? What should I do? Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like, I feel like they, they, with auctions, that was good when it was a bull market, but I think that they should uh, make the whole supply of cards available day one. And if I want to buy Carlos Rivera day one, 
I don't, I, I shouldn't have to wait for an auction. They should auction like, um, for example, like Jersey Mints and, and why not the first cards like one to five to have some price discovery or something, but you can also have price discovery through the secondary market. So you don't really care about that. And, and I think that's something that is going to change. I think that instant buys are going to be um, the way to buy cars and auctions are going to significantly be, there is going to be significantly less auctions. Um, and in terms of games, I think that it's pretty clear from what we've seen already. I think that they're going to have like a new season cards, um, give more utility to new season cards than all, all, all season cards. And I think that's, Another way to incentivize players to actually buy stuff from Sorare continuously. But uh, the whole point is, what do you do with your old season cards and how do you make sure that you're not like screwing everyone by doing that? Do you think your new strategy will include any old season cards? Well, that's, that's a good one. Um... I think I have to, I have to remove the sentimental aspects from me to make sure I'm buying only new season cards. But again, I feel like it all depends on the on the tournament structure. If like, if like I feel there's too big of a price difference between new season cards and old season cards, um, and that doesn't justify uh, me paying the difference, I would go with old season cards. That's fair. <clears throat> Do you think you'll buy any f as like collectibles? No. Because you don't think they'll ever be worth it or just you don't? No, like why, why am I selling my gallery then? I, I think it doesn't make sense. I think, I think if I believed somewhat to the collectability aspect and I don't, I don't discard it at all. I just, I'm not a big believer in, in the collectability aspect. And so I don't think that it's, uh, maybe on one special card, but but one card that has like a sentimental aspect to me, like Vukotic, for example, he's a bad football player. I mean, he played for Vaslan Dever and they got relegated. He plays now in second Bundesliga. He, I, he's better than me, obviously, but he's like uh, uh, less than average football player instead of like pro players around the world. But he was such a monster in the first Sorer scoring system that I enjoy keeping his card. And again, like Thiago Amada, it's the same thing. I, I could watch Atlanta United um, every... I could watch every game of Atlanta just because uh, Amada is playing. That's fair. Um, I don't know. Did we touch on everything? <laughs> yeah, I didn't read chat. So if you see any questions that are... Um, I don't think there's anything. This was for me, actually, if I've ever considered selling my gallery, I think about it every day, mostly because I can't believe I've ended up with the cards that I do, but selling and leaving. No, I like the game too much. Um, and there was some, uh, there were some thoughts on your, um, Scandinavia slander, which I think will, uh, I'll let that pass for now. No, but um, I, I feel like, again, I feel like so many people are, if you play Sorare today, I feel like you're an avid user, uh, an, an avid football uh, fan and that you're willing to watch games and you're willing to like invest time to actually play the game. But I think like most, most people don't have the time to actually do that. And you have to have like a product that is designed for players that just want to play with their favorite players and and most favorite players are not based in Croatia, in Denmark, and no offense to the leagues over there, but like <laughs> most, most expensive TV rights are the Premier League and most people are enjoying watching Premier League football um, and most people do not enjoy watching not game uh, not games and that's for a good reason i do but it's like if i want to win fantasy games i will not buy um not players even if i love them 
I'm going to actually just popped into my head and I meant to bring it up before because we were talking about the, the negativity of many users now, which was obviously the, the opposite when we were in a bull market. And I've kind of maintained this argument over that I've been kind of saying over the last few weeks that SoRare never really wanted to discuss prices of their cards. Like, I don't ever remember them doing it until very recently, which seems weird since prices are down so much. But they have always described the platform as a fantasy sports platform where you buy NFTs and very little of the you can buy and sell them meant you can make money, a lot of money doing this. And it was almost like the user sentiment when we were all selling cards for way more than we bought them. Is it our fault? No, that everybody no. thought that you could just get rich playing this? No, no. I, I will never say that it's the user's fault. I think that it's the product and the team responsible. Well, it's the team running, running the product that is responsible for what the user is going through. And I think that like discussing uh, market prices or card prices is a very difficult subject to touch on for two reasons. I think it's in terms of public relations, it's not that easy to discuss. And second, I think in terms of regulation and, and that's the whole problem about like not knowing what law or any kind of law that is applying to your product. And I think they just didn't want to take any risk on that. <clears throat> because when, if you take risk on that and say something, I don't know, wrong, or maybe that doesn't look right for, for lawmakers, they would, they would just use that when they have to work on the law that is supposed to regulate uh, your product. So I, I again, I, I think that you have to be as transparent as possible, but don't say stuff that is contradicted by your actions, your previous or your next actions. And and yeah, I think I definitely think so. should embrace the fact that they are the main market regulator hmm. because people think that way already. And 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 you see so many people saying um, uh, needing like their trust in Sorer being reinforced uh, because they feel like Sorer is actually kind of deciding uh, what their cards are going to be worth worth. Uh, over the long term, and they're kind of right because I think, like, obviously, if a if, if a player um, gets like an injury, a long term injury is going to affect the value, etc. But like, also, it, well, a, a great example: the final game week I played seriously, I won. I I, I placed third in cap to seventy, and I placed, um, I think it was eighth in uh, Champion Europe Rare Plus, right? And I want the exact two same cards, uh, which is Mark Flecken. Okay, so Mark Flecken, uh, Premier League goalkeeper. You, you. So I, first, I was disappointed. I was uh, I want two similar uh, two two same cards, but that's life. <clears throat> so Mark Flecken, that's that's pretty good uh, because of the context, because of the Premier League event and stuff like that. Fine, but my main problem with that is that they printed five Mark Flecken's over the past um, uh, three game weeks. And I was like, well, how do you expect me to actually like, well, it doesn't protect the value of the reward. And it's kind of like uh, destroying the value of the people that, uh, the, the, the card value of people who bought Mark Flecken on the market, on the secondary or on the primary market. And I feel like, yeah, it's it's you 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 can say that you're not affecting the you're not let's say willingly affecting the market, but you are by default because you are the primary actor of the market and you are the actor selling cards and uh, issuing cards, and so I think they have to do a way better job at like at like game economy. I mean. And 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 you you could argue 
someone watching this could argue this guy know nothing uh, knows nothing about game economy and i would say you're right i i i don't i didn't study game economy but you said you're going to make efforts to stabilize pricing and you didn't and so i don't need to be a game economist and no one needs to be a game economist and to actually say that they failed uh, at uh, this aspect of the game. Do you think if they took greater control of the economy or <clears throat> I don't even want to say took greater control because they have significant control over it. Do you think that they find it beneficial for certain card prices to be low? Like li should limiteds be as cheap as they are? No, I am. So... I don't think like control of the economy is the right term from what I'm trying to explain. I'm, I, I, I would say the main thing they need to have is transparency and sticking to those rules. Like if you say my game economy rules are this, 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 and we're sticking to it, at least you know what you're like when you buy a card, you know when when the la the next card is going to be issued. Um, you know uh, probably that uh, one card is going to be rewarded next game week. But like having like five cards being issued in just two game weeks is is complete madness to me. And and I'm sure that if you write um, game economy rules, you will never see that. Like you will never see where uh, you will probably see we're going to issue at uh, at at most, let's say, two cards per game week uh, of a single player, or you can say of our rare cards, for example, or you could say um, at our discretion if like the the average uh, statistics of a uh, of a player rises to a certain level. You can expect you can expect us to like, um, like issue more cards of that players to be sold on the primary market because they need to make money at the right time also. Um, but since you don't have any rules, I feel like on EAFC so FIFA, you have like more <laughs> transparency about uh, how many cards are going to be issued than on and when than on and I'm, I'm probably exaggerating a bit here, but. Uh, but, uh, but more than on Sora, where uh, co supply control is set, uh, is so key um, to protecting the value of your gallery. Do you think it'd be better if we, they just always minted everyone to the max? Obviously, the no, flood of I, cards like is a negative, but like if we actually knew we got all of them. No, but so. To me, that's what I was saying about like instant buys. It's like um, <clears throat> the problem with issuing card rewards is that you're issuing cards that are probably not wanted and also are probably going to be sold instantly on the market. Um, and so you're kind of like destroying the value, right? But by doing instant buys for every card of your... Um, of one player, for example, let's say everyone, uh, someone wants to buy the 100 cards of Mark Flecken, right? They can do that, but they will pay at least the same price or maybe some more than the previous price to actually acquire the card. And so that way you're actually protecting the value of your card. And if like after, I don't know, 15 days or 20 days, some period of time, like no one bought a card, then you slowly decrease the price of the card. But that's fine because if no one bought a card, that means that there's no demand for it and that's it. But if you don't have rules uh, and transparent rules, you can't like predict what's going to happen. And I feel like it's very frustrating for everyone because you have, you think that uh, if a player performs well on the platform, well, uh, 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 stats wise if a player's if a player performs well then his price is going to rise uh on Soria. well that's definitely not true because it all depends on the car supply it's and and, and, <laughs> and that's a problem that's 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 a big problem too. you should reward performances not 
Sorer being good at controlling the supply. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't even discuss um, the control of the supply by Sorer. It's like it, it should be a non subject. Because we know everything or we don't know everything? Because we, know, we know everything. And because, yeah. like, since you know everything, either you accept it or you refuse it. But you cannot say, I'm, I'm playing the game. Uh, or you can say, I think this rule is bad for such for such for a reason or whatever. But you cannot say, oh, this rule exists, but I'm an against it, so um, I refuse it. You, if you play the game, you have to accept the rules that go that, that go with them or that go with it. And so I feel like, and, and that's the same thing, and that's why they say that they're going to have like uh, pla um, windows where they are going to announce gameplay changes. I think they said between like, or well, I don't, I don't, I didn't understand clearly, but September and February. So I don't know if it's going to be September or between September and February, but yeah. whatever. Um, and, and 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 that makes sense because I think that uh, people were frustrated. Like they bought they bought cards, they built galleries uh, uh, around the uh, certain tournaments, and all of a sudden it disappears. What do you think about Sora outsourcing gameplay and just selling cards? I don't remember if I told that. Like I think it was like last year, so 2022, not 2023, but or maybe on a French stream. I think so. Rules should be like handled by the foundation or something. Like hey, it's just like throwing stuff or uh, an idea around, but it's like making sure that like you have like so representatives. Uh, players and economists or whatever, like working on game rules, and not and, and not rules being operated by Sorelen. <clears throat> and by foundation, I mean like an association, but like some kind of a council that is like trying to figure out stuff, um, and like. Ru uh, making rulings on 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 big gameplay changes, but I'm fine with Sora like <laughs> doing whatever they want. At the end, at the end, they're incentivized by one thing: is like making money. And so, um, um, if they make money, that means that people are paying them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, at the end of the day, they are incentivized that like they I, I, they don't like uh, market sentiment being down. They don't like people being negative on social media. They it's absolutely against every incentive um, incentives that they have. So um, they will do whatever that it takes to actually make sure that uh, their customers are happy and that they make money out of them. I, I do think people want to believe that they don't care. Like, obviously, so rare cares. They don't want people, like, not unhappy with their product. And therefore, not buying their cards, like it, it doesn't um, make sense that they would. Well, <laughs> may, maybe, maybe. Well, then, then, then it it really doesn't make sense. But I, I don't think that's the case. Yeah. <sighs> okay. I think I'll let you go. Did you say everything you wanted to say? Oh, actually, let me say. Let me. <laughs> I'll, I'll clip this later. So careful how you answer this. Are you bullish on so rare? Yeah, and so and I think I, I said it well a different way um, in the long format, but I've I, my belief in the fact that NFT fantasy games are so much better than traditional gambling um, is stronger as um, as ever, and I think we have reached like a low point. And an all-time low, and I don't think we're going to go lower in terms of market sentiment and and community mood. So, uh, yeah, I'd say I, I and I, and again, um, rivals and what's the other thing? Yeah, um, what's the other thing I mentioned? Sorry about your short format. We can do it again. I said rivals and another thing I don't remember. It wasn't um, but no, I think they have done. They know what's wrong. I think that. Um, they are taking steps to actually change what's going on. Um, so yeah, pretty much. But 
the fact I'm selling my gallery is just like <laughs> giving me hair and um it's it's just like a mental health and and a financial stability issue at the end of the day and and I know that uh oh yeah regulation thank you regulation is such a big thing to me uh because what they did is is really really significant by like just having like a Sorer law being enacted in France. And they're just one step away. Again, there, there's one thing that is missing um, that is unclear. Once that is sorted out, I think um, I think it changes a lot of things. Um, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm also bullish on my mental health just by doing that. Great. So it's fine. That's great. <clears throat> well, thank you. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um... I don't know when we'll do this. Are we doing a, a second sustainability show? I, uh, I want to do it because I think it's, I think we can, uh, no, the sustainability episode I want to do is uh, we told you guys what we thought about it uh, three months ago. And now you're doing it. Like you're just like saying stuff and we're like, huh, interesting. <laughs> So everyone go back and watch that. It's literally called So Rare Sustainability on, on Sora Data YouTube channel. So go check that out. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us, Maxime. Good to see you. And um, we'll see you guys around.